Welcome back everybody to video two of the 2021 grow season where my little buddy and I, mostly me, are going to take the seeds that we laid out for germination last time and we're going to put them in dirt. I'll show you my process. It's real easy. Let's check it out. So, one of the first things that you need to know about this process is when do we plant our seeds. When you're using the paper towel method, you are going to have a very easily determinable and obvious answer. It's when you start to see roots. Now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We saw what they looked like before when you just, you know, you look through them, you just see seeds. Well now, with the help of a light, You see all those little squirrely or uh, squirmies coming off of there? I'm not going to say what they look like, but you can infer those are roots. When you start to see a bunch of those, you know you're good to go. We can even take take it a step further. These right here, see how crinkly this package is? You can almost see what I'm talking about there. These actually have leaves coming out, not not full leaves, but cotyledons. Those are the uh, seed leaves that you're going to see first. Once you see those, it's time to move on to phase two, dirt. So what kind of dirt do I use? I don't use anything fancy. You can use your own compost, uh, make sure it's real, real fine compost, uh, and it's very well composted, unlike what I had last year. I'm trying to eliminate all risk at this point because last year I screwed up so much with that. So what I'm using is simple miracle Grow starter mix. It's going to be in a big old container because I'm not using the bag. So I've got this old cat litter bucket and it's all sitting in the bottom of it. Uh, this is not all that I'm going to use. This is the leftovers of, of some that I've already done before. I actually have quite a few planted in there already. I can show right around closer to the end of the video. But the first step for, for making the dirt is you take it out of the bag and you put it in a container. And usually it's best to put it in a container where you can put a lid on it just to prevent anything from getting dropped into it like especially if you store things outside you get seeds blown by the wind they get in there and this stuff is really good for starting seeds that's why it's starter mix so put it in a nice container and add water add water and mix it up real well until you get a thick a thick mud not not like a sloshy mud where if you shake it it it, it wobbles but like a thick, I, I, I mean, you see what I'm talking about here. To where it has some consistency and it's wet, it's not dry, because when it comes out of the bag, you're not going to be able to add water to it easily without mixing it well. So if you put it in the smaller containers and then you start to add water, the water is going to fall off the side and pool at the bottom. You're going to have to do a whole lot of mixing. It's easier to do the mixing in one big batch like that and then scoop it out as you need it. What other, uh, things we're going to need, that's going to depend on how you want to grow them. In years past, I've used two methods with success. One uses these, you've seen them before, they're just the standard throwaway pods that you can get at uh, any nursery from, from old plants or you can order them online. They're super thin plastic so they are dirt cheap and if for whatever reason they break, toss them out, pay a couple bucks, get more next year. Uh, get larger ones the bigger they are the better the smaller ones really stunt the growth the difference in sizes between that and the other method that i'll show you is that the plants got to be about that big when they were in these so i mean they came out seriously that big and then they had to grow the rest of the way for the season now when they're in the other method the one that i'm using again this year some of you will find no surprise in this Solo cups. When they're in these, the roots have a whole lot more room to grow. You're going to get plants that get to be a few inches in diameter. You're going to start to get real big, nice leaves. So when you take them out into the sun, they're just absorbing a ton more, and they grow a lot better that way. Uh, there are 
with these you're going to want to make sure that you pick up a couple of trays these trays whoop, there's scissors in them. these trays have no holes at the bottom you need to make sure that you get trays that can hold water and the reason is when you get them all in there like this and they're all spread out you just imagine they're all the way across this when they're all spread out it's going to be a lot easier to water them all at once and the way you're going to want to do that is not from the top but from the bottom so you'll basically take one of these out and then just put a couple inches of water in the bottom put it back in and let it absorb up through the bottom because this soil is really absorptive once it actually starts taking on water uh, the other reason that I have one of these is in the event that you don't want to use the double cup method, which is simply, actually I don't know if the double cup would work that well with these because these are super close together. The double cup method is you put a hole in the bottom here or you snip off the side as you'll see here in a little bit. You fill this with water and you put it in there like so. That works really well for a lot of people if you don't feel like getting the big plastic containers. You can definitely do double cup. I did it my first year I think it was with great success it's just a little bit more of a pain because if you want to water them you have to water in the cup so that means you have to take the plant out water it put it back in you don't really want to water again from the top down because you want the, the seeds to reach down into the soil for water making the roots go down making the plant go up it's good so I'm gonna get everything prepared and we will move forward I will be right back all right, hopefully this thing stops doing this weird autofocus uh, spasming thing real soon because this is going to be a little... Yep, see, there it goes. Okay, might just have to deal with it a bit. So I'm going to take this time to go over a couple of things. Uh, one, th something that I didn't go over when putting the seeds down, which is actually a little bit important. Uh, make sure when you save your seeds from the previous year or at least before you put them down that you uh, if, if at all possible give them a good rinse it's easier to do that before you dry them and, and it, you know like give them a, a good scrubbing down not this i mean you don't wash them piece by piece but give them a good once over because these were ones that i saved before and as you see it's they look all they look pretty healthy in there there's not a whole lot to worry about on the contrary these I did not clean well and we got some nice mold spots popping up there so this is not something that you want to see it's not necessarily a hundred percent bad it's uh it's not gonna make it to where these seeds will not germinate or will not uh continue forth but it's it's just another variable you don't want to introduce into your planting what are we going to need for this i like to have a pair of tweezers around these are dirt cheap tweezers um, mom got them for me a few years ago and put them in as a stocking stuffer there were six different kinds and i think i've lost all but this one but this is probably the most useful one out of them anyway they don't need to be nice they just need to be able to tweeze don't do anything without a sharpie ever because we're going to be labeling these either directly on the cup as i'm going to do or if you so desire you can get some sort of uh plant labels that you stick in the containers themselves um, this will save you a step later on you just take them out of the containers when you go to transplant them to their larger final homes and just whoosh, stick it right there in the ground and you're done but with that we're gonna go ahead and get started I'm gonna pause the video for just a second and fill up one of the cups it's a pretty simple process you don't need to watch we've done it so how far is it filled up? It's about to this line. Uh, you can take it higher if you want to, but for the sake of the number of seeds that I'm starting this year, if you'll look, that's a big old pile of them over there. Uh, I'm not going to use all of my allotted space. This will honestly be more than... These are kind of tall, actually. You can get somewhat smaller cups, but uh, th these are kind of tall and narrow, but it's, it should be fine for what they're going to be doing. And uh, once you get into about this full, the process can begin. Set it aside. And we will go with, out of my way, the Black Naga. We'll start with these. So we're going to undo what we did before. Now you can be real nice about this, or you can just yank it out. But just keep in mind that 
paper towel is not super duper sturdy when wet. But uh, if you want to be nice about it, if you only want to take a couple of them out that have sprouted and go ahead and put them in soil, you can, and then put it back in the bag when you're done. But for these, as we can see, I've got a whole bunch that are ready to go. And I'm actually going to move this dry paper towel out of the way because I don't need it as much right this second. Now we need to figure out where the unfold is on this. I think, where are my tweezers? That makes it easier. Where'd they go? Eh. Okay, found them. Here's a separation. I just don't know which side it's on. They're a little bit of an optical illusion sometimes. There we go. Come on. I hope this is focusing. I'm not even looking at the camera. And we pull it apart and looky there. Got a whole bunch of roots coming through there. So I'm on a nice stained wooden table right here. I don't really need to worry too much about getting anything terrible on it. But I do have these paper towels up here for a reason. And you'll see in just a moment. Move my seeds a little further out of the way. There we go. All right, so here comes the fun part. If this thing will just focus, just focus one time for me. There you go. So now we take, eh, just pick one. Usually start with the ones that have the most green to them, if you actually see some green. Let's see, that one has a little bit of green, but it also has a broken root. I think I might have just done that. I will actually skip that one. This might actually be worth showing. So, okay. Oh, that focuses nicely. The best way to grab them is, say, like right there, and then just gently pull them off. That way you get as much of the root intact as possible, and then just set it aside. All right, grab it close to the paper towel. Pull it. That's a long bunch of root right there. I don't know if I got that on camera. I'm sorry. I'm not very good at this. And then set it aside. I'm going to grab a couple of them, and we're going to be putting a bunch of extra in there because there's a simple rule of thumb when it comes to this, and that is if you plant one seed and only one seed, it's going to die. If you plant four or five, they're all going to sprout and be just fine. And we'll do four because we're going to... Oh, oh, broke that one. And that's a broken one as well. Uh, that one looks pretty big. There we go. All right, so now we've got four decent sized ones, and I'm going to put this down so it's a little more steady, and we can zoom over this way. So now we've got those real long roots on there, and we need to get the roots down into the soil. Now, I, I finger tapped it all the way around. You don't want to jam it in there real tight because it makes it a little harder for those, uh, for those roots to get down in there, but you want to pat it down just a little bit, get them off to one side, and then I just use my tweezers to make a hole straight down. Then we grab these. And now this one's super long, so it's actually gonna be kind of interesting to show. Get it down by the base and just push that straight down in there and release. And continue to do so until the seed is just barely out of the soil. Pat the dirt gently around. I mean, if you wanna completely cover the root, you can but you generally want to keep the seed close to the surface when doing it this way. That's the best that I've had so far, best method that I've done so far. We'll just cover it up completely because that little piece right there is not going to stay in the way. And that one's planted. So now we've got a couple more to do. Yeah, I'm all thumbs. It's once again the part where I've got the camera directly in front of me instead of being able to do this in my normal way we just drag the seed to the bottom of the hole drag whoops drag the root to the bottom of the hole and we see that little tiny bit of seed right there sticking out that's just going to sprout right up and pop off and hopefully the cotyledons will come through whoop got both of them there yep yep just one of you there we go Grab it by the end. Now, if you're pulling it down, you gotta do it gently if you're doing it by the root, especially these real fine roots like I've got going on, because if you start pulling and it gets caught up, you can snap the root. So just be gentle. It's um, one reason that I say to plant way too many seeds is because you are invariably going to break one of these roots and kill one of the plants, and that's that's okay. They don't, they don't really have feelings. So if you plant too many, you can make more mistakes. If you plant too few, 
you've got to be perfect. All right. This one I'm just going to be a little bit more haphazard with, just to give it a try, see what happens. Just tap it down. I might actually fully bury this one a little bit and see what happens there. All right, because I've got three in there. And I know at least two of these are 100% going to grow and sprout over the next couple of days. And, and it's just, it's pretty much a given. So, these are Black Naga. And since I'm not going to bother using labels, I'm going to write it directly on here. Black... Naga. Excuse my handwriting. It works for me. I know what it says. You don't have to. All right. So, you know how I said you want to put a hole in the bottom of these? We're going to be doing that as well. Since we're not doing the double cut method, this is uh, this is just a regular old everyday single cut method that I'll be using with the trays. I like to get more than just a little hole directly through the bottom. Some say you can heat up a screwdriver and just stick it straight through. I like to get a little bit more, so you just take a pair of scissors straight across the edge and just clip some off like that. You can do it a couple of times. I'll do it two or three. And this, you're about to find out, is why we have that there. Because you're getting this nice leak coming through. So very quickly, take it and move it over to the final container and just let it sit. And that is one. Now I've got a whole bunch more of these to do. I'm going to do two cups for each of these and probably about... God, I've got most of my seeds left still to do. Ugh. Um, I'll be using a couple of these as well because I plan to give a few away. Wow, that's very, very delicate of me to just slam my, my finger down on that. Um, so I'll, I'll be using a couple of these that I'll be growing for ones that I'm giving away, but for the most part, the ones that I'm keeping are going in the cups. That's pretty much it. All right. So remember how I said before that you can sometimes leave the seeds in until you actually start seeing leaves. The seven pot primos here have quite a few of those. So I'm going to go ahead and show a second example of how this is done. But in this case, we're not going to do ones that have seeds still on them. We're going to do ones that have actually sprouted the seeds completely off and now have their starter leaves. Isn't that pretty? It's going to be the same way. Just pull them off the thing, they're off the paper towel, and uh, set them down. Do it again. Set it down, and do one more. All right, let me pop this down so it's nice and steady. This is going to be very similar, but I figured it's worth showing there is a difference. Oop. Let's get these all out of the way, except for the one I want to use, and it's going to be this big long one in the back here. So, once again, I've, I've finger tapped it down fairly firm. I need to be super compact. I'm going to push this down a little bit further than last time because this is a long one here. Start just sort of pushing that down. This does not have to be pretty. But it is important with these that the leaves do not get buried in the soil. In fact, if they start to like touch the soil a bit, just reach under there and give them a little gentle tug up. There we go. All right. So that one's done. Rinse and repeat. These leaves haven't opened up quite yet, so we're just going to have to hope for the best. They should be fine. They've already shed their seeds, which there's a point that I'm about to talk about here in just a couple of minutes. Once I get this done, I'll cut over to the, uh, the other view. All right, both leaves are above. If you want to sort of give them a little separation, you can, but it's not necessary. They'll separate on their own. Plants are pretty good about surviving. They've existed a little bit longer than we have, so they're, they know what they're doing. Whoop. See, this is one problem with these tweezers is they sometimes stick. Okay, got to use the other finger here. There we go. Now just give a little gentle tap on down in there. I hope the lighting is good enough. Okay, I went a little too far there. Where'd you go? There you are. All right. And then the... Uh, Finger comes in. Make sure the seeds are up. Tap it around them. 
or make sure the leaves are up. There we go. And then we move on to the last one. I'm just going to leave this one. I'm not going to do a whole lot of super delicate separation because this one is very young. I'm actually going to very slightly bury them on this one just to give it a try. Should be fine. So now we've got four of those in there. I already had this one labeled. I did not have it cut, so same as before. Oop, didn't get much there. There we go. Better cut. Good scissors help here. These are El Cheapo crappy scissors. So the better the scissors, the easier this part will be. All right. And then those join the others. I've got them facing forward. So these are my two black nagas, actually my eight black nagas, and then these are my four seven pot primos. I'm going to do the same here with these, and then I'll uh, be right back. All right, so the seven pot primos have been planted. They are now over there. And we're going to pretend we fast forwarded a couple of weeks and we've got some sprouted seeds. These are the ones that I did last week, I believe. Maybe, I think it was last week. Yeah. These were the ones I did last week. And as you see, that one has sprouted and is growing. It's growing nicely. It's about an inch tall. The cotyledons are nice and nice and healthy. And those two little itty bitty leaves, those are the first actual starter leaves coming through. But you see these other two here are a little bit nipped at the top. This is my, my peach habanero. Uh, there's, uh, there's two things you can do about this. The problem is when you do this method and you leave the seeds above the soil, the seeds dry out. When the seeds dry out, the leaves have a little bit of a harder time getting away from them or get, getting out of them. So what you want to do, and it's going to be hard to do with the camera in my way, is very gently hold the leaves, pinch with the tweezers, and give it a gentle pull. Now, ideally, you won't do what I just did. See the seed is there. We can discard that because it is officially useless. Everything that was inside it is now planted. But as you see what I did there, I, I sort of nipped the tip of those just a smidge right there. But that's okay because they're already, they, they sort of filled out wider than these. You see these are long, these got a little bit wide because they were stunted by the fact they couldn't open up. Um, this one, you're gonna have to be a little more careful with. You will get a few of these. The best way to handle these, sorry, I'm trying to center this up, is to grip them sideways. It's so where you're pinching against the grain. Give them a little squeeze if you can. This sometimes will help pop them open. They should get nice and brittle. All right, just work it a little. No, not quite. This is the similar, it's similar to like cracking a nut. That's pretty, not almost technically what it is. Ah, my hands are shaking because I'm trying to do this gently and big hands are not good at doing small okay this is not gonna give up so we need to do the same method as before i've loosened it up a bit let me see that should be focus focus there we go hold the leaves there we go so there we see that that is gone it is done done for discard it and our seed leaves are there to be opened and it's ugly but you know what it doesn't matter if it's got a little crinkle in it it's going to spread out the second leaves are already starting to want to come in on this one it looks like i can sort of see them right there and this one's going to be just fine now i planted three in one cup i'm not going to keep three odds are me taking these two off was a waste of time because i'm just going to end up keeping this one because it's going to be so far ahead multiples in the cup just means later on you're going to have the choice of the best the best survivor of them you're not always going to make the best choice because the one that you pick might just dip down into something catch a fungus and die but that's why we have multiples and you should you should still be okay the more you grow the better your success rate will be but that's that i'm going to go put this back in the grow tent so it can get more light and i'll be back for my closing statements <laughs> all right it's all done I've got everything in place in the grow tent. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here. And you can see there's all sorts of open space between them. It's not ideal because it promotes evaporation when you bottom water like I do, but 
I've got a method that I'm going to try this year where I'm actually just going to drag the hose in and water directly and then take the hose out when I'm done. I only have to do it every couple of days because the soil that, um, that I'm using is super absorbent and it holds a ton of water in it. Just got to monitor the water levels and make sure it doesn't get too dry. Once they get a couple of pretty big leaves on them, they can, they can actually dry out a little bit and not get too wilty and die. But when they're in their very early stages, drying out is pretty much instant death. So this is where I go into monitor mode, keep an eye on them over the next few weeks. Hopefully they all grow. There's a few seeds that I did plant that were very, very early in the germination stage. So I put the seeds back in the bags and the bags are now sitting back on top of the, uh, the light again. Hopefully a few more will germinate just in the event that the ones that I planted don't actually sprout. Fingers are crossed. Hopefully the next videos that you see will be an update on everything turning green and getting nice and big and bushy. Until then, take care of yourselves.